So maybe this beast of an appetite. Honestly, fast food, eating fast food is very unlike you. Oh, I kind of just ran over the curb you right there. Did, you actually. see that? It wasn't kind of. Didn't even did. notice it because I'm in the TRX. I Wait. did notice. Hey, crew, I've got the key to that Ram TRX. And today we're going to see what it's like to live with. So let's start with remote start. Morning, neighbors. Ah, yes, the thunder of the TRX's startup is sure to upset at least a few neighbors, though mine are remarkably tolerant, knowing what I do for a living. And I waited a few hours into the morning, so I'm not waking anyone up with that startup. Let's begin with the spacing of the TRX in my driveway. I've got it parked right near the edge of my driveway, sitting next to a RAV4, not a terribly wide vehicle. This one my wife is reviewing, that's parked also right at the edge of the driveway. And this kind of parking job is necessary to actually walk between the TRX and just about anything you're parked next to. And uh, you may want to fold in these door mirrors, which you can do via a button inside the truck. In terms of length, I've got it parked right to the edge of the hedge, which I suppose if I wanted to, I could bring the truck over a little bit so that I would be cutting into the space between it, but I would be able to back it all the way up to the edge of where my garage door comes down. That would allow me to not have the nose of the TRX hanging so far over the driveway, over the uh, gutter in front and a little bit into the street. So you kind of pick your poison with the parking of the TRX but it's a big truck either way. Hopping into the truck for the first time with it locked and the key fob in my pocket, I just put my hand on the door handle, that unlocks the doors, and then uh, avoid the B and swing the door two notches over before hitting the RAV4 next to me. And that gives me a nice access point to get inside. There's this little lip here that can be a running board. These are just the rock sliders though, so only half of my foot gets on there. Then I can use the RAV handle to get my butt on in. Hello, cabin crew. Thank you for joining me for this day in the life in the Ram TRX. And in this video, I want to see if living with something this big and powerful is enjoyable, fun, or annoying. I'll start with the simple task of finding spots in here for all the stuff I brought with me, like my extra large water bottle. Felt it was appropriate for this extra large pickup truck. I'll try the cup holders first, which are predictably too small and the remote start is finally timed out here so let me start this one up myself it's a bit cooler inside the truck and that turns on the digital rearview mirror in the console on this upper level i've got some gopros batteries and mics there but no water bottle will fit there oh but the second level is just cavernous that easily swallows up the bottle probably another three like it if I don't want to stick it there though, in the door, it's not going to stand upright, but on its side, it'll stay even as you open and slam the door. So that's a pass. But then what about these other things? I've got my sunglasses, which can actually just go right up here on the dashboard. That's nice. And my smartphone and wallet. Wallet, there's even a little cubby for it. That's a perfect opening for a wallet. And then my smartphone can go here on the wireless charging slot. And last but not least, the key fob, which actually has its own home right here behind the gear selector. So surprise, surprise, massive truck. It's got a lot of storage space. So now I need only to put on my seat belts, throw it down into drive, release the parking brake and head on out. Okay, we clear the first obstacle, which is just turning the wheel once to get out of my driveway. Now, if you're wanting to see the TRX fully utilize its 6.2 liter supercharged V8 engine, trick remote reservoir suspension, and these mega 35 inch tires off-road, then you'll wanna check out my POV drive review. But today, I'm going to experience this truck in the environment it will spend 95% of its time, just around town and commuting and just 
living with it. So on the agenda today, I'm just going to go get some coffee and then I'm going to use this truck to go on a bike ride. It's gonna haul my bike for me. And then tomorrow, tomorrow's gonna to be fun. Mobile Mama and I, my wife and I, are going to a preview of the new Resvani Beast supercar. So look forward to all that just up ahead for now. Let's just see what it's like around town. First, a very relevant demonstration of the turning radius in the TRX. So here we go. Wheel fully cranked for a U-turn. Honestly, that's probably better than the Toyota Tacoma I just did a U-turn in. That's fine. Like if you just plan on taking wider turns, you're gonna get most things in one go, unless it's gonna be a single lane to a single lane, and then you're gonna have to multi-point turn that. But that's totally fine. And we heard it very briefly, but what's the turn signal sound like? That's not my favorite signal sound. It's a little loud. I'd probably wanna turn that off if I was sitting at a stoplight for a long time. And then just kind of peeking into the throttle here. You can get up to speed without startling yourself. And then the ride compliance. Going over just about the worst of what you'll see around town is phenomenal. This it reminds me of like a cruise liner. You don't feel the little waves on the ocean. You only sort of rock to and fro on the bigger swells. And there is a little busyness of the solid rear axle in a pickup truck, kind of just hopping around a little bit. But on the whole, this is a sublime and floaty driving experience. The seating position for me is a little high. Like I wanted to get this seat down further than it is. I feel like I'm sitting almost on top of the pickup truck. It is just a high riding truck, but I would like to sit more immersed in the cabin and I can't do that. The seats themselves are very comfortable though. And they're heated and ventilated. When I do need to get on the brake, they're not grabby at all. Kind of just slow down progressively. And it's also not that loud. You get a little supercharger whine, even just at part throttle, and I enjoy that, but the Hemi V8 isn't overwhelming. And this one also shocks me. This is a super wide pickup truck, but kind of directing it within my lane is very easy. I get enough feedback from this wheel to know right where I'm sending the truck, I'm not deviating from my lane. Two other things that come to mind that are praiseworthy about this TRX. For one, the ambiance in here is upscale. Like it feels close to appropriate for the $100,000 that you're having to spend to get in the door with the TRX. The suede and leather on the steering wheel feels solid. The leather on the dashboard looks nice. When I rest my hand here on the console, it's brushing up against more soft suede. Just it feels good in here. And then the other thing is the visibility, not only over the hood and out the big side windows, even the blind spot at the back pillar is really narrow. And then of course you've got standard blind spot monitoring, got the digital rear view mirror that I mentioned to see through anything that I might have in the cab or even in the bed. And then these door mirrors, not only are they massive and the kind of one-to-one -one view is really nice here, but then you on the ends have that wide view for if you're trailering or just if you need to see around something that's really far back there. It's just, it's a very easy to see out of truck. And when yellow lights call for it and you're sure you're going to make that light, you just put your foot down and there's plenty of power. And here's another fun practical piece to the TRX. I mentioned I couldn't get the seat as low as I'd like, but at least Ram is thinking of different body types because they give you adjustable pedal lengths. So for someone like myself with a longer torso, but not as proportionally long legs, I can still find a perfect seating position for my body type. It is coffee time, and I could go get a fancy cup of joe from somewhere, but I think what's more interesting is seeing if the TRX can make it through a coffee drive through without making me go insane. So here we go. First curve, gonna take wide and then cut over. Okay, here we go. Am I going to clear it? Yes, actually, 
decently easily. And I can monitor all that with the door mirrors, but also with this surround view camera system that is being a little laggy right now. Being very laggy right now. There we go. Just to make sure that my tires aren't gonna brush up against the curbing and make sure my nose is going to clear. I'm doing well, how are you? May I please have a grande decaf latte? Yeah, if you know me, you know I can't do caffeine. It just, the jitters are real. Now here's one thing I wish the TRX had for sitting in drive throughs with long lines um, and not a hold feature so I could take my foot off the brake, but as is, I just have to do a little more effort. All right, coming around curve number two. Ooh, check this out. I can actually look at how close the tires are on each side getting real close here on the right what about the left plenty of space there back to the right I think we've got it okay the second one was a tighter curve therefore less simple hi there thank you very much you too victory <sighs> now that I am not really caffeinated. I want to get some exercise. So let's see how my bicycle can fit in the TRX. All right, I've got my bike. And now for the question of how best to take it with me. Of course, we'll have to start with the bed. One tap brings the tailgate down. That's nice. And gosh, that is high up there. Um, there is a bed step here that I can deploy and that should make it easier to get, oh man, a lot easier to get up and in, but I'm not gonna use that just yet because I need to fold up this tonneau cover, which is really handy when I have stuff that I want to go in the bed that I wanna keep protected from the elements. Let's start by pulling on these tabs and bringing that down. So now I am gonna to need to get in the bed for the rest of the folding. One more flip over, let it just rest there and I can actually clip this in so it doesn't go flying off in the wind. Now to get the bike in here. I'm not gonna say it was easy to lift the bike all the way up here and into the bed, but it wasn't terribly difficult. And now I've got this yoga mat protecting the tailgate from scratches of the bike. That's securely in place, but is there a better method to bring a bicycle in the TRX? Right, so here's the complication of this method. To actually get the bike down, I'm gonna have to lift it up and then carefully get it over the back of the tailgate because I can't bring this down with the bike in this position. But if I were to bring the bike into the cab, could it actually fit? I mean, this is a massive truck. It's an ultra wide cab. Could it go in here by lifting up the seat bottoms and sliding it through? All right, moment of truth. I'm gonna back the bike in until I reach the opposite door. Go at a slight angle, turn the wheel. The handlebars look like they're gonna clear. The wheel looks like it's gonna clear. Yes, oh my gosh. You can forget your tailgate method. This is maximum convenience. You know, I'm really looking forward to cycling, but it's difficult, honestly, to have all of this power available to me and not use it at least a little bit in my day-to-day -day life. Especially when there's this really attractive launch button on the dashboard. I wonder if there's time and place when I could use that, you know, responsibly. Now, would you look at that? What fortune, just on my way to go cycling. An open road is here, and I just happen to have my race box set up to record a zero to 60 run. So why not in the sport drive mode, hit the launch control button, hold my foot on the brake, pin the throttle and let go of the brake. <laughs> and there's 60 in 3.94 seconds. Power and some practicality. <laughs> and now from that supercharged V8 power to pedal power, I'm gonna go take a ride. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the Rizvani Beast preview. So Mumble Mama and I don't really have a commute, but when automakers have these preview events or other events, we get to simulate one. So that's what we're doing right now, going to Rizvani to see the reveal of their new Beast, which do you remember when the original Beast first came out? 
Do I remember? Yeah. No. You weren't into cars back then. I was not. You was not doing the thing you're doing. I also don't remember any dates of anything. Yeah, well, it was 2015. So it's been, a, it's been a minute. So now we're gonna go see the new one. And while we're going there, we can kind of talk about what it's like to kind of commute in the Ram TRX. How are you feeling being up high? Do you enjoy that? I love it. Yes. I love being up high. I'm sure other people don't enjoy it, seeing us so. Oh, you mean other people like, around us aren't yeah, enjoying how high we are? Yeah, around us, yeah. yeah. But I enjoy it. It makes it nice seeing over traffic. Do you think that uh, this is a pretty comfortable way to get to and from work? 100%. Yeah. I always say that every time. Well, I mean... I always go 100%. You do. So let's not It can say always that. be 100%, <laughs> I guess. Let's not say that. <laughs> I like how large it is. It's roomy. It's comfortable. The seats are nice. Yeah. You know. I mean, big trucks, you don't feel like squished in at all. It's like, you've got plenty of room to play. No, that is true. Yeah. I and don't like that this glitched though. Oh yeah. We, the screen. It just, Ghost decided to uh, send a ton of hot air on us after uh, we had had a rush to get out of the house this morning. So we could not turn that off. So we had to roll down the windows and then uh, turn the truck off and turn it back on. Then the AC started working. But yeah, that was kind of odd. And I think if you were in a commute and you didn't have an opportunity to turn off your truck while you're driving, that could be irritating. Beyond that, I, I'm really enjoying how this truck drives at speed on the highway. If I, if I go quiet for a second here, you can see that it's not too loud either. Like little bit of wind noise, some hum from those big all-terrain tires. But on the whole, for considering how enormous this truck is and how much air is just pelting across the body panels up front, I'm not hearing a whole lot of wind or tire noise. You also have some features like adaptive cruise control and steering assistance. If you depart, let me just demonstrate here. It kind of just brings me back. Man, this is, this is a great way to get to and from work. In comfort, seeing over everyone else, feeling a little bit elite. I do enjoy as well that the sun visors in this truck are so Extra giant. Large. No sun is getting through that. That's protecting all of your face. And as I back us up here, bring in this beast to see that beast. Whoa, it automatically applied the brake. I had it, thank you very much, Ram. Don't you worry about that. Resvani, let's go see what you got. Top Hi, Miles. Oh, Very nice to meet you. So welcome to the new showroom. Yeah, Today gorgeous. we have on display, of course, tank. Vengeance mm -hmm. uh, and gloss black. We added a little bit more to it, and we have some spaces to come. We have our wall of fame. I feel like there's a bunch of my boards missing. I don't know why, but nobody can seem to find them. So in 2014, that's when we premiered the company and the beast. So here we go, the new Resvani Beast. It is, yes, based on the Chevy C8 Corvette platform, but it's fully carbon fiber bodied. It weighs about 3,000 pounds. It uses a 6.2 liter twin turbocharged V8 to make a thousand horsepower. They say it gets to 60 in two and a half seconds. Mid engine, of course, and rear wheel drive. This thing is even though a Corvette based car, it is so much prettier, especially the back end. Really not a fan of the look of the rear end of the C Corvette. This is nothing like it. It looks Italian, it is sculpted. The stacked pipes back here, this giant diffuser juts out. These wheels, 20s in the front, 21s in the rear, on 355 section rear Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, massive sections of rubber. I mean, this little cue here, this is a little Corvette-y, so that's, that's kind of a giveaway. I like the vents over the front wheels, which are functional. I love this nose. It sticks out so very far. It cuts down here. You don't even see the taillights when you're looking at it dead on. You have to get so very low here to actually see those. And then you can see all this front ventilation. This is one piece of pragmatism that I don't know has been fully fleshed out because the door release is way down here but I guess you can get used to that. And they are dihedral doors. Now that says supercar, whereas the C8s kind of just regular doors do not. And I'm now going to hit this button here to pop the engine bay and look inside at that twin turbo V8 motor.
Now what you are losing in terms of practicality back here is the trunk that typically resides behind where the engine bay is in the seat. But uh, yeah, when you're making all that extra power, you need places to add additional cooling. And then there is still the front trunk with a little bit of storage space. So I mean, that's that's your, your dose of practicality in this car, because otherwise you don't have anywhere else to put things. Hopping inside, these doors do cut in a little bit tight when the sill is extra wide. With the roof off, it's very easy to get inside. Now this piece right here, this says Corvette with the gauge cluster and the eight inch infotainment, but it's kind of been re-sculpted a little bit on the dashboard. Got this, it looks like hand stitching leather up on that. And then of course this yoke style steering wheel, which retains a bottom piece here, unlike a Tesla yoke. So that it doesn't feel so awkward, I'm sure to turn it. I will drive this vehicle at some point in time in the near future. The chopped carbon pieces at the ends look really nice. The feel in the hands, it's a little bit thick right there. Carbon fiber back here, the peekaboo window to the engine bay, still retain the Corvette style wireless charging pad and your drive selection looks just, just like the Corvette, the carbon fiber paddles on the back of the wheel. These also feel like they may have been pulled out of the Corvette as are these carbon bucket seats, which I imagine are still heated and ventilated like the Corvette. There are benefits certainly to retaining some pieces of a major manufacturer's design. Rebodying something can go any number of ways, but if it's gonna look like this, you're gonna get some fans. I can't wait to drive it. A thousand horsepower, come on. It's gonna be fun. Okay, after seeing the beast, it gave me the hunger of a beast. Oh. So we should get some lunch. What are we getting? Uh, is, it, is it weird to suggest we eat healthy? <laughs> I mean... In these videos, I eat like at fast food restaurants all the time. So oh, I, I need something to clean the gut. So maybe this beast of an appetite. Honestly, fast food, eating fast food is very unlike you. Oh, I kind of just ran over the curb you right there. Did, you actually. see that? It wasn't kind of. Didn't even did. notice it because I'm in the TRX. I wait, did notice. You noticed. Um, wait, so what did we say we're getting? We're going to get salads or sandwiches at Mendocino Farms. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, here in Whole Foods. What kind of fast food are you eating in these videos? Yeah, you don't need to know. What? She doesn't need to know. Okay. He never oh, let's eats go up some Mendocino food. Farms at Whole Foods. Sounds good. Oh, but I forgot that I actually have to park this massive truck in a tighter parking space. The backup camera is clear, thankfully, and I do have the surround view. Probably gonna have to adjust this once. Yeah, just once. Got cars waiting on me. It looks like we're gonna fit in this space pretty well, though. Let's see. Huh? Is it gonna break for you? Don't slam oh. on the brakes, thank you. Wait, wait, let's go see how I did from outside. Don't honk at me. Ah! <laughs> She's proud. Well, here's that salad I promised, but because I had that beastly appetite, I also had to get a pork banh mi sandwich. Whoa. Yeah. What'd you get? How is it? The not so fried chicken sandwich. It's not fried at all. It doesn't look fried at all. It's also, not. do you want some sandwich with your sauce? <laughs> I really like sauce. You really like that sauce. I really like this, but you know what? <laughs> Critique, not enough sauce. actual. Not enough pork in my sandwich, Christina. Thank you. Okay, we gotta hurry home so Christina can take our daughter to school. And the TRX is up to the task. How much horsepower? 702! And um, later, when you're finished, can you help me install some car seats in this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just I'm... More enthusiastic. No, because I have to install car seats in like three different cars a week. Okay, so you're just gonna help me one more time in the TRX, thanks. All right, Mobile Mama, what's our car seat situation looking like? Well, I'm loving that you have three sets of lower latch anchors. So and it's so wide that you can actually fit three car seats across. Exactly, and I'm super comfortable sitting here. Let me see. Without a car seat in. Confirm. Look at all this space. Confirm the comfort, look at amazing, the space. Amazing, amazing. Okay. You also I'm have three tethers. Okay, so you can do like For forward, forward facing. facing car seats. Okay, yep. cool. And I mean, I'm just gonna sit in the passenger seat real quick. Yep. And uh, yeah, I've got plenty of leg room and, and can even go back headroom. Further. I can angle, I can go back further? Yes. Nice. Okay, now we move the car seat over to the side behind the driver's seat. And that's, 
exactly where I left the driver's seat. So this is perfect. You can do three car seats across or two plus one adult, and you don't have to move the front passenger seats at all. All right, last stop of the day is to put some fuel in this 33 gallon tank. And the EPA rates the Ram TRX at 10 MPG in the city, 14 on the highway and 12 combined. And if we got that 12 combined, then 33 gallons would give us 396 miles on a tank. But I've been seeing seven. 7 MPG over the last 62 miles, which did have a mixed cycle of city, highway, and some fun drivings. And at current fuel prices of $4.69 for 91 octane gas, it's gonna cost me $161 to fill up this tank. At least, it's got capless fueling. At the beginning of this video, I said I wanted to find out if living with something this big and powerful was enjoyable or annoying. And after a lot of time spent behind the wheel, I can clearly say that I would love to own one of these. It's easy to see out of, the ride quality is excellent, there's so much space for both small items and large ones. The cabin is a premium place to spend a lot of time, and the power is both abundant and exciting. But a big, bad pickup truck is not gonna be for everyone. And the TRX has its own particular flavor of issues. The infotainment was really laggy for me. This driver's seat, I couldn't lower as much as I wanted to. It's just difficult to park, whether that's in your own driveway and you're trying to space it next to something else or in a parking lot that might be tighter. And Good lord, this thing is thirsty. That fuel bill is gonna be a lot. But those things aren't enough to scare me away from the awesomeness of this pickup truck. And now you have to tell me in the comments if you'd put up with the inconveniences for... for that. And don't forget to check out my full-on drive review if you wanna see me take the TRX off-road, jump it, and just have a whole lot of fun in the dirt. And I'll see you again next time.